Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm Travis Sylvester and today we're going to be discussing how to block the hard to get weird shapes to a mirror finished with the rest of the flat car. Welcome back guys. First and foremost, Let's get this out of the way. You guys need to be wearing respirators and or gloves. Uh, it is important that you guys protect your lungs. This one's a charcoal filter by 3M. They are interchangeable. This is the exact same mask, but this is more of just a dust mask. You do not want to be wearing this while you're doing any painting or priming, but when you're doing body work and that sort of thing, this is a lot more easy to breathe in. So I would recommend get yourself both. Ultimately, we're gonna really be diving into, we've already talked about how to body work your car and we actually showed it on this exact same 55. And as it's been progressing, this car has kind of been on the back burner for a little bit. We wanna bring you up to date on where we are. We've done the first prime. We've already showed you guys that video on how to block the car nice and flat. And then we, we wanted to come back in because we have a lot of questions on how you get rid of those, the minute ripples. We talked about it in the general easy big flat areas where we're blocking long and for the whole car. We don't need to go into that. If you guys want to see that, check on the back videos where we have block sanding primer. But today we really want to focus on all of the hard to get areas. Compound shapes where you have more than one curvature where it blends out into the flat. Typically guys have a problem in these areas because it's all about finesse. You try to just go in there and muscle it out, but you're thinking about it a little bit backwards and you end up having an area that you tried to work out a low, or maybe it's just a different shape and maybe you don't have a low, and you end up making the area surrounding a low spot and next thing you know you have these waves. There are a variation of different blocks and as you guys know over the course of time we have we have a lot of different blocks here. We have everything from big kid blocks to linear blocks to lucky blocks and so on. We have next level blocks. And to be honest, I don't really have like a go-to, this is the only kit. I mean, I'm being straight with you guys. I like certain blocks from every single kit and I have my reasons of why. Now, for example, when we were blocking the car flat, I really enjoy the heavy hitter because when you're trying to grind through all that body filler on a big surface on that's flat, these handles are super nice and easy to grab. However, there's other big kid blocks that look the same, but they don't have the same effect. So if we show you guys another big kid block with the same style handles, the thing that I don't like is that if you are to put this on a curve, you will notice that where the glue is in that center knob, there's a flat. So you're never going to get a true curve that you need. Say this was a 40 Ford fender and you got this where you're bending it, you have the wrong shape because this has a flat just because of the glue that's used on that knob. Me personally, um, the thinner ones we don't even really use at all. As a matter of fact, I think this is still brand new. However, with different ones we've come to like, I do really still like the linear blocks um, and I really do come to like the next level blocks. And the reason is, is as you're grinding through all these steps, again, we're kind of reiterating what the block sanding of primer was, but you need to be thinking about the shapes because these are where it comes really important. As you go from the bodywork stage where you're using 80 grit, 100 grit, even 120 grit, you're cutting down into the filler really nice. You wanna always make sure that you have fresh paper, so listen to the sandpaper cutting. If you've been using it all the way down the car, it's probably time to switch your paper so you can, you're not got, uh, gliding, you know, if your paper's getting gummed up or maybe your primer's not dry enough, all of these things play a factor. Dry times, letting this thing fully dry, like this car has been sitting now for a few months, it is completely dry. So it does help if you're wondering why you've done your body work and your primer work 
and then you come back and you're doing things too quickly through the process and then you come back and block it a second time and you start seeing that you have imperfections and you're going, I blocked that last week and it was perfect. Well, it's because it's still drying, it, the filler's still drying, the primer might still be drying. Um, this primer, we've talked about it a lot, it's the VP2050, it's the same thing you guys saw go on the Impala. I like it because it's got a long, uh, a, lo a lot of buildup that you can actually block back down and the fact that it's an epoxy, if you do have any areas that may rub through, when you come back in and spot prime, you don't have to worry about an adhesion issue. But going into the different blocks, now let's talk about, does the longer block make your car straighter? I disagree. Um, even though I do like this block, I don't ever use this block because if you look at this block in its natural state, I don't know if it shows up on film, it has a curvature to it. A lot of it's from when they glue them together. And the biggest reason that we just don't is because it's all about hand placement. As we fit this to the car, this block is awesome for doing the flats and it will get the car flatter, but the thicker block is what's actually going to get you a more rigid line. Now, when you have a, a body line in the car, for this instance, it's not a body line. We just have the edge of the fender flare and the bottom of the quarter. Well, when you look down the 55 Chevys, they actually curve from wheel well opening to wheel well opening. And picking this block, the biggest thing you're gonna do here is people are going to grab a block that they like. Like for me in the finish work, I really like the next level blocks. This is a quarter inch, and as you work higher in grits, you also want to be thinking about how much pressure. So I'm gonna cover it again. I like to call it the thumb test. If you are putting, let's just say this has a bigger curve to it. If you put the block down and very gently use your thumbs to push on the edges of the blocks, it should not have to push hard. You want this to conform you want the thickest block that conforms to that shape. You do not want to have to force it because if you are forcing it too much, you're going to wear the area in the center down a lot more. However, when it comes to this area, the biggest thing here is checking before you start because like I said, this curves in. You can see when I let go, it does curve in. It's crucial that you don't want to gouge this, but how you approach this low is the biggest thing. A lot of guys will put the block right in here. Mike has already gone through and blocked this whole car flat, and these are the last few areas. And as you can see, there's a little bit of guide coat showing right in here, and we had a couple little onesie twosie things, and most of it's come out with the 2050 epoxy. Again, if you guys are wondering, I've heard that you can't sand epoxy primer. This is a hybrid, it is a high build epoxy. That's why I like it so much. It's kind of the one-stop shop up until you're ready to seal the car and paint. But if you are doing hand placement for this block, we know it fits the shape. If you're grabbing here and out here, you are going to bring this in and sometimes that's okay if it blocks up quickly. The biggest thing is in the very end, we're gonna be going from, if you've already primed your car, whether you're in polyester or whatever primer that you guys like to use, I like to start with 120 or 150 grit, so that way you're actually cutting down. If you use, if you do a prime after body filler and you jump to say 220, it's not aggressive enough, it doesn't have enough tooth that's actually going to cut the primer down completely flat. <clears throat> what it'll do is it'll actually ride on top of and you'll still have ripples and imperfections. What you're trying to do here is you're trying to guide coat the whole car. Like we have a very hint of mist of guide coat in an aerosol can in this area. And after we've sanded it, I like to use the Merca dry guide coat. However, I always place my hands, wherever you place your hands, you get a different look. If we already know everything out here is flat, well, you can see where Mike's come in and there's a couple onesie twosie things where it blends from rocker to door. 
When you're trying to get rid of these edges, keep in mind this is super thin, there's not much left, but if you come in here and you're trying to feather this line out and you're working this, it's, it's better to put your hand placement bridging your area that you have filler and also focusing on feathering out these edges. But once you have something where you're not worrying about an edge that's harsh, we talk about when you spread, you wanna to try to spread as thin as you can so you don't have to fight an edge. Because when you fight an edge and you do this, you create a low right here. Now, when you have everything smoothed out, so let's disregard this filler, and you're just trying to blend this in, guys will go to a low and they will put their hand right in the low. What you wanna know is that your body work is as good as it can be, okay? As you do this more and more, you're gonna get better and better. But what you want is the first few swipes as you move that this starts cleaning up and the guide coat goes away evenly. But if you were to come in here and put your hand and work this, you're pushing, we see that it goes in there pretty easy. You're working this down already. You want to take slowly everything that's good down and it should slowly watch this line here where it's cleaning up, slowly should start moving into it. I will also take my pinky finger or whatever's comfortable for you and I will put it on the edge of the next level block so I cannot cut into this lip. You can also modify your blocks. Maybe you put a 45 and cut the block off so that way you can get up against maybe the fenders angled more. You can modify your blocks and a lot of these manufacturers have those modified blocks already that you can buy. But as you go from flat, we used a half inch block. The next one down is a quarter inch block and then so forth. As you go into a more of a curvature of a panel, you can then downgrade. So if you started with a half inch block up here and then it starts curving in a little bit more, you can go to the quarter inch and if it curves in more, you just downgrade in the thickness of the block that fits that shape as you go. The big thing is a lot of guys will block this out and they just think they're good. Double check your work because a lot of times what guys do is they fixate on those lows and what you've done is you've created a dished out area instead of actually taking the whole thing that's flat and working it down as one into that. You want to work the whole panel down. So even though we have a low that's very minute here, whether you come in and you pencil it and you scuff it and you use a glaze or even a 50-50 mix of Rage Ultra and Rage Ultra Extra, so you get a nice, good, even spread into that. You don't want to put it on thick. You don't want hard edges. You want to be able to just real easily feather that out. And I will hold the block, if you are going to fill it, right over that area that you filled and work on that with my prominent hand that feels comfortable until I start to see things feather out. And then I will guide coat the whole area and make sure that I'm taking that thing down evenly and rolling into my edges. Another thing is if you're using, everybody likes Durablock, that's kind of the most common thing, but they're not a hard acrylic block, but everybody still uses them. And I think the biggest takeaway is if you're going to use, like we use the round Durablock for a lot of things, and that's because it is flexible, it will flex into this area, but because the end of it's round and it's soft, it also won't dig into these edges. It's a light touch. If there's one takeaway you can get from doing all this, it's picking the block that fits the curvature and it's light touches at the end. You might be grinding hard and you don't ever wanna really push hard. You just wanna let the block do the work. You're just putting a firm pressure. This is a, something you acquire with time. The more you do the body work, the more you will start picking up on these little key things, but it's practice. You're not. I don't want to say you're not. Most people will not get this right out of the gate. You typically want to slowly improve and as you see your work get better, if you focus on these details and making sure you're guide coating enough in the body filler stage, it makes the end go way faster. You will hear guys that have primed a car five, six times. That's bad. 
Why? Because body filler has more give than primer. Primer is really brittle. It's really hard. So when it's completely dry, you don't want five coats of primer in there filling a dent. You want the body work as perfect as you possibly can in the filler stage. So that way when you come in, you can see we only have some minor areas. And this isn't even messed up. This has a little tiny low. But what I was getting at with the Dura blocks is as you roll into them, a lot of guys will sit here and they will do this motion. Short, small motions. What that will do is it will dig a hole and a groove right through here. What you want to do is you want to be going long motion with that block. So if you have the Dura block that you're going to use, you don't want to be up here because we know this has all been done with a hard acrylic block. You want to work down here and run it off and run long wise. So if you're doing a curvature, like on the back of this 55 into the trunk, we are body working everything across the panels. This is not welded, this is body filler that is used. And for the guys that have asked in the past, how do we align this? How do we know the latches are there? We align everything in the very beginning in the metal stage when we do all of our gapping, where we weld the edge with the hinges and the latches and everything. With weather strips, the whole nine yards. And at the very end, when you know everything is lined up with the latch, then you can remove the latch, use a straight edge, and put the filler in here. We use a long magnet, so that way everything's locked in really tight. And then you can shove the filler in here. We do not remove this filler until we are ready for paint and wet sanded. And then we will cut that out remove the doors, and then we will take all of that overspray that was in the jam and remove it, and then back mask the back edge of the outside, and then prep the inside jams last. It's a little bit backwards from what you would typically see, but the majority of the guys that we follow and that we communicate with, this is the, the better of the ways that we've seen this go down as far as getting a nice straight body. But again, if you're going to use a softer block, the big thing is feel the block and long light motion. As you go from 80 grit to 220, every time you upgrade, it should be a lighter and a lighter and a lighter touch until you are doing your final blocking with just your fingertips. And that's really why I like these next level blocks is because if you're just using your fingertips, you're not, you're not gripping the whole thing with a handle from big kid blocks or linear, although those are great, maybe they work for you, maybe that's just what you have in your shop, that's fine. But light touch, so if I don't have a big handle, it doesn't create problems. For example, if you grabbed a block, and let's say you were using the wrong block, let's say you used this really thin eighth inch block that's super flimsy and you're trying to get your car super flat, you can see how just a little bit of pressure, this thing flexes and then you're going to have, believe it or not, that little bit of deflection and these areas that don't bend uniformly will cause your car to not be laser straight. So that's kind of what we're trying to teach here is how to do a laser straight car in a mirror in your garage at home. We have come through and we have blocked you know, if you're going to stay in an area with an acrylic block and then the big thing is X pattern, 30 degree motion. And if you're going to do small motion, eventually feather it out and do a longer motion as you go. That way you're not creating one dished out area. And even if you're going to use something like a Dura block or linear does have a dowel that is a little bit flexible but I like a little bit of the give of the DuraBlock for some of these uh, radiuses. But you'll notice even with a DuraBlock, as long as you're using just the finger touch and very lightly, just letting it graze over, it shows you, we still have this area that's low and you can see just a tiny bit here. Now, if you just keep going over this, there's enough build and primer that this may or may not clean up. If it's not, this is where you're gonna come in with our pencil trick that you've seen in the bodywork video and pencil just around this. And that way you have a guide exactly where you wanna spread. Then you can come in and scuff it up for adhesion and do a very thin 
coat just past your pencil line. And again, the reason you wanna do it so thin of a coat is because you're just going to be doing this exact same method very lightly. After you've blocked your filler out and you have the shape that you need, guide coat it at the very end when you think you're perfect and make sure you have not left a groove somewhere in a panel. If you're doing the same technique, like the big long curve here from the top of this quarter into the trunk, the big thing is if you're going to use the round dura block, I roll it over and I kick it just, if you were to keep it straight with the car and roll it, you're going to get a different effect than if you kick that at just a small angle and now you're using the block I'll just add a little bit. It's going to not have the ripply effect as much. The other thing you can do that I do like to use is I take these linear blocks, especially for the big, bigger curvatures, and I put the sandpaper on the handle side, and then I use that to get the big sweep. I like these because you can get a sweep of a fender, and you can do a um, curve to get that. Maybe you just use your hand to cover the edge but typically it's all in the light touch. Everything in your final sanding should take a long time to just work through the process. Take your time, as light as you can, and get everything to clean up like this. When you're done, if you want a sanity check, just go back through and then go to the next grit up. So like this is 150, we'll change at the very end, we go to 220 and we do the exact same process and just make sure we've caught every single thing. Think about it like a magnifying glass. The higher the grit, the more magnifying glass you're gonna see. So after 220, we're gonna roll into, if we have filler spots like we have, we're gonna spot prime it. We're going to then go back to our 150, 220 and just feather those areas out so you have one perfect gray canvas and everything is completely scuffed, every little nook and cranny. And then we are going to guide coat it again, every time guide coat in between to make sure you're removing the scratch from before and then come back through and wet sand with 600. Now, depending on the car that you're trying to perform, you can use a soft block. I don't know if we have, we do have one. If you're using one of these little palm, uh, if you've gone through all these steps, don't use your fingers, guys. You will leave the imprints of your fingers. It will cause ripples. This helps. And also, once again, Linear does sell sticky back, longboard, wet sandpaper that you can use in that stage. And then maybe you just use your hand palm sander that you can come around and get all these curves at the very final. We even, for these, these big of radiuses, we will just wrap these with 150 grit. So that way we can make sure we blend all these out. I use the block to the point that it just hangs off. And as soon as you have a block that does not fit that curvature, you need to use something that will curve, but also keeps a shape. So. It's all about just feathering one shape into one another to where you have a uniformity and it looks good once you're in wet sand. At wet sandpaper time, once you have everything in 600, some guys will use 400, some guys will use 500. The thing you need to know about wet sandpaper is that if you're going to paint a metallic, go to 600. And I don't really go above six unless you're doing like waterborne then you can get away with 800 grit because there's not enough film build. It doesn't build like solvent. Water stays super flat and it will show all of those little scratches that you may have left behind with 400. So food for thought, wet sand the whole car. And that's where you need to get down and use your light source, whether it be the sun outside or your light, and just make sure you have gone over every square inch moving and watching that light. You should see that light be perfectly crisp. And if there is any waves in that light fixture, that is where you have an area that you need to come back in and do more blocking to get it right. I hope that helped you guys sort through some of your small, tight, ripply areas and make your car a show car quality finish. Continue to learn, <laughs> share what you guys know, because that's how we all grow. Like this video, subscribe if you guys want to see a lot more on uh, this whole process that we're going to be doing through all these builds. See you guys next time.